when you think about something, uh, it takes work. Thinking is an active process in which you are constantly trying to convince yourself of the truth or lack of truth of the idea. Knowing is different. Knowing is a passive state of being. It just is. Um, and so when you uh, know something, you're not forced to continually work on it. It's true. It is as undeniable as the fact that the sky is blue. We all know the sky is blue because we see it every day, and our experience informs our knowledge. So you might say that knowledge is the combination of thought and experience. A popular thing that people say is to think outside the box. And for me, that's not the end of the journey. Because when you think about something, you are best positioned to continue thinking about that thing. But when you know something, you are well positioned to act on it, because thinking about it doesn't serve you any purpose. You already know that it's true. Knowledge in and of itself is great, it's valuable, but you're not gonna change the world by knowing things that other people already know. For that, you need uncommon knowledge. A few years ago, I was introduced to an uncommon idea started as a curiosity and developed into an interest and has become a very important philosophy that I live my life by. It's this one idea is at the core of why I launched a startup and it has significantly enriched my life and the lives of my friends and family. Would you like to know what that idea is? I'll tell you. Travel is free. And specifically, for Americans, if you want it to be, travel is essentially free. Raise your hand if you know that travel is free. One hand in the room. So I think it's safe to say this is an uncommon notion. And it's uncommon in part because it sounds crazy. Most people will run into a mental roadblock when they try to ponder this notion that travel is free. It runs contrary to the common wisdom. And as a result, it requires a little bit of unpacking. So why don't we unpack it? To start, we'll define some terms. When I say travel, I am referring to hotels and commercial airfare, okay? And when I say free, I mean that for the individual doing the travel, uh, a hotel will typically cost zero dollars, and a flight may cost a few dollars in taxes and fees, but the base airfare will be cash free. I'll also caveat that travel is not always free for all people at all times, but um, in this example, you benefit, for example, by being an American, uh, being a US citizen. So if we, if, if Knowledge is this combination of a thought and experience. Let's look at the, the theory and the experience of free travel. And we'll start with the experience side of things because that's just more fun. Um, so over the last five years, I have been to Lima, Peru, Machu Picchu, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Santiago, Chile, Easter Island, London, Barcelona, Lisbon, Portugal, uh, Istanbul, Paris, San Diego, California, uh, New York about a dozen times, 
um, and the Maldives. And I may have left a few out, but you get the idea. And all of those were essentially free trips. And that Maldives trip in particular is remarkable because my wife and I went to the Maldives for our honeymoon. And we had a $40,000 travel experience. We flew first class and stayed eight nights in a $1,000 a night hotel for under $200. So not $40,000, under $200. So clearly my experience supports the idea that travel is free. But how? How does this work? What's the idea? What's the theory behind this? Well, it exists because of a complicated set of financial incentives and social constructs that have kind of conspired together to create this atmosphere where you can travel for free. And at the heart of it are credit cards. Now, the conventional wisdom, uh, look, before we get there, raise your hand if you routinely overpay for the things that you buy. Okay, I should see a lot more hands because it turns out everyone overpays for the things that we buy. We pay to the tune of two to three percent more for all of the goods and services that we buy in stores and online to cover the convenience fee for using credit cards. And incidentally, you pay that markup regardless of whether you use cash or credit. That amount of, uh, of marked up spending aggregates to about $40 billion a year. And um, eventually, some of those billions of dollars go to airlines and hotels to purchase frequent flyer miles and hotel points that the credit card companies then package with their credit cards to entice people like you and me in a competitive industry to choose their credit card instead of their competitors because every time you swipe that card, they earn a profit, okay? Now the, con the conventional wisdom on credit cards and credit scores is that the more credit cards you have, the worse your credit score will be. And that simply isn't true. It's just wrong. The factors that uh, account for your credit score are your payment history, your utilization, the length of credit history, the types of credit you have, and your recent credit inquiries. None of those things is number of credit cards. And I guess it shouldn't come as a huge surprise that Americans are misguided about credit because I recently read that over 90% of us don't even know that we have multiple credit scores at any given time. So much for conventional wisdom. And so it feels appropriate at this moment to issue a brief public service announcement. If you are pulling out your cell phone right now to apply for a credit card, stop, don't. Um, because if you're just learning about this uh, from my talk, you have neither the requisite theory or experience to know what you are doing. Um, and on top of that, you, you may not hurt yourself by applying for a credit card, but you're not gonna be successful at achieving your goal without some additional education and maybe a little bit of guidance. Um, and for that education and guidance, you should go to rewardstock.com um, <laughs> and then you should apply for credit cards. So uncommon knowledge, what do you do with uncommon knowledge? Well, I launched a startup. It's called rewardstock.com. Perhaps you've heard of it. Uh, and I, I've used this knowledge to earn a million miles and to fly uh, and travel all around the world and, and, and experience amazing things. Um, you know, Shakespeare says that knowledge is the wing with which 
we fly to heaven. And I guess I would say that knowledge is the wing with which I fly to the Maldives <laughs> in first class for free. Um, my entire perspective on travel has changed as a result of this. When I want to go somewhere, I simply go. Uh, and I'm at least unencumbered by budget. I look for the most luxurious flight I can find, and I literally search for the most expensive hotels. And that may sound counterintuitive for someone who, like myself, is budget conscious. Um, but I, I think it actually makes a little bit more sense than the alternative. And if you think about it, how does the average person plan their vacation? So they want to take this relaxing trip somewhere, and they start by saying, okay, what are all the places in the world that I might want to go? Now let me just immediately dismiss the top few options, because they're too exotic and therefore too expensive. Third tier vacation, here we come. You're already getting off on the wrong foot. And then you say, well, I need a flight. So Expedia, what is the best rate you can give me on a seat in the baggage compartment? Because you can just fold me up and stuff me in there. I just want to save 10%. Obviously, you need a hotel. Those get no better. You say, Expedia, what have you got that doesn't have Bed bugs. <laughs> wi Fi optional. Um, so, what we do with Reward Stock is we are helping people to have better life experiences by empowering them to make smarter personal finance decisions that make them uh, more able to travel freely. And so, when we talk about what you've learned, what I've learned in startup world and, 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 and this whole idea of uncommon knowledge. Why do I say that it's important to have uncommon knowledge and not just uncommon ideas? And the reason for that is because along your journey, you will need to rely on the conviction of knowledge because you will encounter doubt you will encounter smart people who, through no fault of their own, believe the common wisdom. And they will tell you that the sky is blue. And you must be able to look them in the eye and say, no, it isn't. And further, that the only reason they believe the sky is blue is due to a principle called Rayleigh scattering, in which the molecules of the atmosphere scatter photons of blue light with a shorter wavelength into our eyes, more than other colors. But that some times of the day, when the angle of the Earth to the sun is just so, all of the blue light is scattered away. And what remains in the sky for our eyes to see is orange and green and red. And so I encourage you, yes, to think outside the box. But don't stop there. Pursue those ideas and combine them with experiments and experience until you gain uncommon knowledge. And with that uncommon knowledge, change lives. Thank you. Thank you.